Let's Talk Supply Chain. So welcome to the show, Margo. Hi, Sarah. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really thrilled and excited to be here. I've been following you on LinkedIn and your show, and it's fabulous. Oh, well, thank you. And I'm super excited to have you here. I mean, I've really appreciated your support over the years, but we've never actually met. And so I'm glad that we can now take the time to do just that. And I'm really excited to hear about your journey. I mean, you talk about all things entrepreneurship, leadership, sales in supply chain, and I can't wait to just dive in. So let's do that. Why don't you tell us about the early part of your career? Where did you go to school? What was the transition like into uh, working? Working. And I don't know if you went straight into supply chain or not. So talk to us a little bit about that. Sounds good, Sarah. So it actually really started when I was a young girl and growing up. Uh, I'm very close with my father and he's always been in some type of national sales role. Oh, cool. And so watching him while I was growing up in his suits and going to these meetings, and obviously he's my hero. So I just thought, oh, this is so inspiring. This is something that I want to do. I want to get into it. Uh, and he was more in printing and travel the world. And so when I graduated college, the University of San Francisco, I majored in communication. So I took a little advertising, marketing, uh, speech and debate, and I really wanted to apply that to sales. And after I graduated, I looked at different development programs that were going on in the industry. And at the time, Conway Freight had a great business development program where basically you would start and learn all parts of the business, supply chain, all different modalities of transportation, even HR, cost accounting, pricing, sales, operations. And so throughout that program, I realized that sales was definitely the route that I wanted to take. And that's how I began my journey in the industry. Awesome. Awesome. So now tell us a little bit about where you are now. What are you doing today? Yeah, you know, I would say that this journey has been definitely educational, uh, inspirational, and not what I initially thought that it would be. Mm. I thought that I would join a company and be there forever. Uh, but right. I've noticed that, you know, mutually beneficial relationships are extremely important. And sometimes, uh, you know, you outgrow the company or the company outgrows you, different opportunities, what have you. And so I've been able to move about the industry and work for these different entities and really take a lot from them. Uh, some of the leadership operational and sales have been so influential, very motivational for me. Every person that has hired me in the industry, I still have a relationship to this day uh, with them. And it's important to continue that line of communication. And, you know, I'm always learning, but I would definitely say it's been an interesting journey, not the straight line or upwards line the trend I thought that it would be, but uh, dabbling in warehousing, fulfillment, LTL, truckload, and now really moving forward with the strayage project, I'm, I'm really excited. And so learning about all these segments, I feel like I'm closer to my customers more than ever because of this knowledge that I have. But it's also been exciting for me because it's different than most of the industries that my friends and family are involved in. Right. Absolutely. And so you talked about um, touching different parts of the industry. And I'm always talking about how you need to get into supply chain. You need to try different things because there's so many different opportunities within this industry, right? That even if you come in thinking that you want to do one thing, you're most likely going to find something else that you may like a little bit better. But in order to do that, you've got to sort of try everything and figure out what you like, what you don't like, what you're good at, what you're not good at. And so how has that kind of shaped your industry because, or sorry, your journey? Because you have tried all of those things. You kind of agree with what I'm saying or what, you know, would you suggest that, or where even would you suggest that people start when they, they look to get into supply chain? 
That's an excellent question, Sarah. And I'm going to try not to ramble because this is, it gets me excited. So (laughs) I definitely believe in finding a company that has a business development program within their company. So for example, when I started with Conway, they really wanted you to learn the culture, the industry, and then shadow operations, shadow pricing, shadow HR, shadow sales. So you could have come in saying, hey, look, I want to be operations. And then going through the program, you realize, you know what? Sales is actually where my strengths lie. So I tell people, and I want to inspire more women in this industry. It's so cool to be able to collaborate with, uh, you know, other females that, you know, it isn't cosmetics. It's not retail, but it's really exciting because it's really the backbone of the economy, in my opinion. And there are, like you said, so many opportunities to be involved Mm -hmm. in different aspects of the business. And think about, Sarah, think about what you're doing and what I'm doing with the live and marketing and how fun that is and social media. I mean, Yes, I completely agree. There are a lot of attractive and supply chain is getting hot now opportunities for those that are um, looking. Yeah, and I I totally agree with you. And I think any business owners or even supply chain leaders that are listening today that don't have a program like that, I really think that the next generation of supply chain that are coming into this industry are looking for it. They're looking for ways to try different things. They're looking for ways to shadow, like you were saying, and go and check out what accounting does. You know, go and check out what's happening in the warehouse. Really understand what each part of the supply chain actually means to the supply chain and how each function, you know, really is that cog in this overall huge, huge, huge wheel. And so, you know, talking to the next generation and them, letting them know that, you know, this is what you want to be doing, but then also talking to the leaders and saying, this is what you want to be focusing on because this is how you're really going to be able to attract talent, right? And so what you you talk about, you know, being passionate about women in supply chain, what's your experience been as a woman working in a historically, you know, male dominated industry, which, which is what it has been? I didn't really notice it at first, Sarah. I, I didn't either. <laughs> I had and 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 what is it? Nature versus nurture. So very close to my father had what you would call four brothers growing up, and so they've all been amazing. I have very good relationships with the opposite sex, very positive, healthy relationships. So that is important, and I say that because there's actually been people that have entered into this industry that I've trained in sales. And they don't like the fact that it's male dominant and they've left because of the fact that they have, you know, whatever it may be, um, that's that obstacle in front of them. But I would say that I really didn't notice it until recently. The more I'm becoming involved in, you know, the marketing, social media, the more traveling I do, the more events that I'm at, I realize that I look around the table and sometimes I'm the only female. Yeah. And at first I feel that that's exciting. But then I also feel that it's disappointing in the sense that, you know, that connection, that diversity is ultimately what's going to drive and sustain your company, your entity. Uh, You know, the relationships that I build with the women in supply chain now, it's so exciting. These these trade shows, RELA, uh, CSCMP, TPM, uh, you know, they have more space for these women to get together and collaborate and discuss what's going on. And so... Like I said, I didn't really notice it when I first began. I was a little naive and now I do see it, but I think that it's an opportunity for us to uh, collaborate and really start this movement and gather more females in this industry. Yeah. And I would add on to that and say support and empower. I think, you know, as women in supply chain, I think we really need to get behind each other. Right. Because I feel like male males in the industry, they really get behind each other on social media and they're like giving them virtual high fives and commenting on their posts and 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 we're seeing more of it. But I think and also we need to be able to um, pump ourselves up, too. Right. Like if we've had an achievement or something like that, we we need to feel empowered to be able to post that and really live our best lives and pump ourselves up as well as pump each other up as well. And I think that that is a responsibility 
for all of us as women in supply chain, because we talk about moving this movement forward, but it's going to take action and it's going to uh, take for all of us to be visible and to really, you know, own it, right? I agree, Sarah. I think action speaks so loud that I cannot hear your words. And so when you have the chance, like we did to collaborate and really build each other up, you know, take advantage of that. And if you have feelings when you come across someone that's similar in the industry, or maybe not even in the industry, but that's another uh, high profile, uh, charismatic, powerful woman, if you feel something negative, think about that. Where is that coming from? Why? And dig deep. And what I always tell people is reformat. That person's an inspiration to you. Engage with them, comment, make friends. And I think the more you change that mindset, you reformat those, those thoughts so that those words fit, your actions fit. It's a, it's a beautiful thing, Sarah. And I think, you know, all women in supply chain really need to focus on building each other up uh, through their actions. Yeah. And, you know, I think also for the next generation of women in supply chain and, and, you know, people in supply chain in general, we need to knock out some of those things that have been kind of ingrained in some of the women who are older in the industry, right? About what it's like to be a woman in the industry, what it's like to uh, feel competitive against a woman in the industry and things like that. And I think we need to break through those barriers. We got to change some mindsets. Like I'm reading a book right now about uh, being a nice girl and how the connotation of being a nice girl is like, so derogatory, not just in supply chain, but just like in general. Um, And it actually can be such um, a superpower. And I can't remember the name of the book and I'll have to go and look it up. But it's such an amazing book about, you know, really changing the mindsets around concepts that we've lived for and lived within this industry for so long that it takes each of us and each of us has that responsibility to chip at it until it goes away. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And that takes self-awareness, Sarah, right? And so for me, when I wanted to level up and really look deep inside myself and attack those opportunities that were ahead of me, that were available to me in my reach, I started working with a public speaking coach. I started working with sales coaches because I really wanted to hear everything that they had to say. What are the things that Margo needs to work on? And I didn't realize the self-limiting beliefs that I had and how those were holding me back. So I think it's really important. You know, I did a panel earlier today, find a mentor, find someone in the industry. And that's also what women can do through action is mentor the younger ones that are coming on board, connect with them. And then the people, the, the seasoned reps that we have in the industry, uh, you know, they're going to be able to offer that historical perspective that is oh so important. Absolutely. So is there anybody in the industry other than your father, because you did bring that up at the beginning, that you, um, you know, admired or that you admire today and why them? This one was a tough question for me because <laughs> there are so many people so in many. the industry. So I think I'm going to lead with out of the industry. I am really impressed and always learning from Mark Andreessen. I love to watch his talks on tech and his theories about the future and tech and labor. Um, Mark Manson is also someone that I admire. I love his book, uh, The Subtle Art. find it very inspiring. Um, and so those are two people that I, you know, I follow and I read about that I, that I really like. I love that. Thank you for sharing. And then how did you find your voice? Like a lot of us sort of go through this journey. Um, you go through the career journey and I feel like the journey of finding your voice kind of goes with that career journey as well. I know for me, you know, I worked for a family business And at first, like it was very difficult to sort of find that voice. And sometimes, you know, as women, it's kind of like, what does that voice, what, what is that voice actually, right? Is it too aggressive? Mm -hmm. You know, are we too soft? Are we too kind? Like, what did that look like for you? And was there maybe one moment where it all sort of came together for you? 
the pandemic. So the pandemic okay. brought a lot of opportunities. So I wasn't able to travel and I really needed to focus on virtual presentations. So I mentioned earlier, I was heavily involved in social clubhouse and I listened to some of these public yes. speakers. Right? And so I found one and I started working with her throughout the year. And part of working with her is finding your voice, taking away those self-limiting beliefs yeah. because you're drawing more of that self-awareness. So that's really where I found my voice because before I could hardly stand to hear myself and it was cringy to even watch my videos. And I thought, why? You know, and I dug deep into that and worked through that. And it's still a process to this day, but it's been very empowering. I love that. I mean, I'm all about the coaches. I don't know if you know my story about uh, public speaking, but I, no. I get very nervous. My whole life, I've been terrified of public speaking. And I went and got a talent agent. So nice. I could not bring myself to go to Toastmasters. Like every time I went to like fill out my name or whatever, I froze and like bolted. Or if it was online, I'd be like close tab. <laughs> and so I decided to get a, um, a talent agent and I went on all these auditions. But it wasn't because I wanted the part. It was really just because I needed the practice. And I got That's yelled amazing. out of audition rooms. I got yelled out of audition rooms. I got kicked out of audition rooms, but it really didn't matter because I didn't want the part. I just needed to be in an environment where I had to either memorize lines or, you know, and figure out what I was good at, what I wasn't good at, what I liked, what I didn't like. Um, and it ended up like I ended up on live TV with Denise Richards twice <laughs> for some oh, hair care cool. products because they loved my hair. I've got very, very thick hair. <laughs> Um, and I was on a dog food commercial and all sorts of things. Like there was quite a few different opportunities that sort of came from that. But when you talk about your journey to finding your voice and how, um, you know, you were able to lean on somebody else, it's really, and, and I like to talk about this because everybody's journey is different and that is totally okay. You know, thinking outside of the box, trying something that works for you rather than pushing yourself into something that's like, you know, like too terrifying. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. it's got to be a little bit uncomfortable and a little bit scary. <laughs> but if it's that too terrifying where you're like running in the other direction might not be the right approach for you. But just to let, you know, people listening in the audience know that it's different for everybody and it happens at different times of the journey too, right? Yeah, no, I agree. And I think that's life though, right? And so as you're learning more about yourself and going through this journey professionally and personally, you're able to really pivot in better directions. So I think it's all part of that growth and that process, which is really, really exciting. Yeah. And it's not a destination, people. Get comfortable mm -hmm. in the fact that it's not a destination. You're going to be going through this the whole way <laughs> yes. and have fun with it because that's, that's what it's really all about. So on your journey so far, what have you learned about yourself and what does the future hold for you? Yeah. So I found that I really love social media more than I thought that I did because I wasn't a huge, I don't have Facebook. I have a personal Instagram, but I really, through that pandemic, that opportunity dove into social media and the marketing aspect. And so my favorite thing is building relationships and obviously inspiring others like myself to get into supply chain. And so that's really moving forward. What I want to do, I'm focused on this new role with NFI. I'm super excited and really want to provide value to, you know, our clients and those mutually beneficial relationships are so important. But at the same time, I'm going to be pushing out content and hoping to inspire more young ladies to do what we're doing, Sarah. I love that. And so if you and I were to meet one year from now, because we're going to hold you to this, okay? So just make sure <laughs> that what you decide to throw out, out there, you're going to stick to. I'm just kidding. What are the three things you hoped you worked toward to make the most of your journey if you and I were to meet one year from now? Well, I'll definitely have secured and created mutually beneficial relationships with new clients and 
my new company. So I'm really excited, already working on some great projects. And I will be advancing throughout my career and pushing out some really exciting content. And so that journey is currently in the works. So stay tuned. But yes, I am really excited. And please hold me accountable, Sarah. <laughs> ah, well, I'll try. <laughs> I will definitely try for you on that one. Now, you do a lot of work on uh, entrepreneurship, leadership, and sales in the industry. Kind of, you know, what I mentioned at the beginning, um, I've watched your show. And so which one do you enjoy the most and why? I know you've done all three of those throughout your, um, you know, career journey. Sales with it has been, I believe, the main focus. Um, but I'm sure there's aspects of each that you kind of enjoyed, kind of didn't. So walk us through that. I would say sales first. So there's two sales, building relationships with other people is one of the most fulfilling things that I can do. And so to mm -hmm. create a mutually beneficial relationship for someone in supply chain, to be able to allow them savings that can change their role, their company, their life. That is really what, you know, inspires me and that's what excites me. Uh, the entrepreneurial mindset is really important to me as well. I started my own technology business but had to close it. And I'm looking forward to the future to do more with that in supply chain. Uh, I'm a risk taker. I love to think about how we can innovate and collaborate to create the world a better place to streamline supply chain so that we don't have the hiccups that we're currently experiencing today. So those are some things that I love and inspire me on a daily basis. Yeah, your passion is contagious and you keep Thank using you. the word collaborate. And of course, you know, the sign behind me, collaboration is. Oh my goodness. That's right. Oh, yes. I love it. Yeah, it's something that I say, and I've been saying for years, I'm sure the audience is tired of hearing about it from me, but I still think it's the way of the future. And I, I think there's a lot of people in the industry. You know, this industry is really about people, right? It's about relationships and what you were talking about, building those mutual relationships. And I don't think you know, we're ever going to change that. Supply chain really is going to be about the people. And I think the more that we can come together, the more that we can collaborate, I really truly believe that is the future of the business. Yes, we need to innovate. Yes, we need technology. Yes, we need to streamline processes. Um, but I think collaboration to be able to do all of that and help each other succeed as people, as businesses, um, you know, is really what the future holds for supply chain. It gets me so yes. excited as well. I mean, yes. you and I have both been in this industry for, well, I, I've probably been in the industry a lot longer than you, but <laughs> how long have you been in? that? 15 years? Okay, I'm over 20. Okay, no way. That's so cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. we got to stay. I, I have learned a lot from you. You know that. And I love the sustainability. That was really cool. Sustainability and supply chain. That course was awesome, Sarah. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, we had we had a lot of fun um, making that. And the team at LinkedIn is incredible to, to work with. So um, I really, so cool. really appreciate that. All right. Yeah. So yeah. what advice do you have for leaders in supply chain? This is kind of one of my favorite parts because sometimes we ask about what advice you have for women or uh, young women looking to come into the industry. Sometimes we ask about leaders in supply chain. If you want to give us either or or both, I would love to hear some of your advice because we've got a mixture of different people that listen to this series. Yeah, that sounds good. So I'm going to focus on leaders uh, being and working at different entities. I have seen some of the best, most inspiring leadership, and I have seen also the opposite. I would suggest be risk takers, focus on innovation. Yes, in processes, tried and true is important and to always do your due diligence. However, focus on sales and marketing and take risks in those areas. And whoever you hire for sales or marketing, listen to them and support them. There's a reason that they inspired you to bring them on board. That's the biggest takeaway. I think in the supply chain industry right now, you're seeing more and more people evolve these amazing brands, but not enough people are on that bandwagon. So I'd say really support sales and marketing and let them do their fabulous thing. 
Absolutely. I love that. So where can people find you? I mean, you're doing all sorts of amazing things across social media. And so I'd love to sort of send them your way to check all of that out. So tell everybody everything that you're doing and where they can find you. Thank you, Sarah. I appreciate that opportunity. So LinkedIn is my main space. So you can find me on LinkedIn. I also am in Clubhouse. There's a bionic sales room every Friday morning that I'm involved in. Uh, but the best way is email me, uh, text me 310-906-6151. And you can find that on my LinkedIn profile. Awesome. And your LinkedIn profile, what's the, what's the name that they can find you under? Uh, Cargo Margo, uh, Margo Sales 101. Both of those searches should pull me right up. Where, how did you come up with the Cargo Margo? I love it. <laughs> so John Asperian, he is a content writer. He's on LinkedIn. And he did a roast of my LinkedIn profile. And he said that everyone should have a hashtag, something catchy okay. that people can remember you by. And he said, why don't you do Cargo Margo? And I thought at first it actually made me feel a little sick because when I was in elementary school, there was a boy that used to tease me and call me that. Oh. But I didn't bring it up. And I said, you know what? That's a good idea coming from a great person. Let me go with it. And it's been amazing. So I actually flipped this awkward, what would you say, memory to yeah. a great experience that's been um, fabulous. Talk about empowering. Thank you so much for sharing that story. I know you kind of hesitated when I asked you. I'm like, so uh, I wasn't sure where we were going to go with that one. Right? And my high school reunion is coming up. So if I see him, I'm going to say, look. No, I'm just kidding. No, what you need to do is go up to him and say thank you and then walk away. Yeah. <laughs> because then he won't know why and you don't have to explain yourself. <laughs> right? That's hilarious. And it might make you feel good and like sort of shed shed whatever whatever that is that you might be holding on to. <laughs> I love it, Sarah. I love it. <laughs> All right. Well, we're coming to the end of the interview. And honestly, you know, um, I want to say thank you to you because you really accommodated us. We had to turn this episode around pretty quickly and um, you really made it happen and I know this episode's not coming out for a couple of weeks but I do want to say happy birthday because the day Thank that you. we were actually recording this episode is your birthday and you took time out on your birthday to come on to our Woman in Supply Chain series and so you know just a shout out to you appreciation and love for you to um, take that time and make sure that you could be part of this series and, and I just want to thank you for that. Thank you so much, Sarah. I am honored to be here and I'm looking forward to our relationship and collaborating more. Yes, collaboration is the future of business, baby. All right. <laughs> Thanks so much, Margo, for coming on the show. Thank you.